Hi guys, Gaming Bear here. Right, special, the F2A-1 Buffalo. So what have we got? Well, it's a Tier 3 American fighter. Let's see how it compares, see what it's like. And it's, it's a nice looking plane. So let's uh, give this a, yeah, a run for, well, a look and then a run for our money and see what it's like. So, uh, boom. So let's have a look. So initially, let's compare it to the Japanese so we can get an idea of what it's like and how it compares to other more nimble planes well that I would presume look 1100 points yeah definitely nimble then on the other side of things a good mid-range is the likes of the uh, of the Bristol so we can look at that as well and even come through let's have a look German FW159 so we'll have a look and compare between the two so we are looking airspeed 404 so it's got lower airspeed than the than the American so um, that's we'll cut that out so let's airspeed wise we'll put the uh, the Buffalo up at the top the Bristol in the middle and then do do a comparison this way so survivability now we are looking Oh, that's a premium, sorry. I picked the wrong one. Japanese A5M. Silly bear. Let's get this right. So it's my eyesight. Okay, so 120 points for the, the Japanese with a weight of 1,600. 2,100 weight with a survivability of 160. And 2,300. So the most hit points, looking at this, you're going to be seeing a comparison. I would say the... the Bristol has got more hit points relatively. It's the medium weight with the, the Buffalo having higher weight but the same hit points. Therefore, hit points to weight ratio is actually lower than the Bristol. So that's that side of things. Then we come to the guns. So what we have with the Buffalo, we've got uh, two guns, a 12.7 and a 7.62. The Bristol is running two Vickers 303s, which are like the 7.62s. And the uh, the A5M, the Japanese, is running two 13.2s for 85 points. The points value on the Bristol is 93, and lower ad of all of them is 74 with the Buffalo. So it seems a little bit uh, undergunned. Well, it, let's not say until we've tested it, we don't know if it's undergunned. We just know that it's the lowest gun of all of these. So then we look at the, uh, the airspeed. So coming up, first of all, Speed wise, well up there with 263. And we saw from the comparison with the uh, the German that it was actually faster. So that's an, a nice top speed. The Brit is next uh, behind it at 251. So uh, you're looking 12 kmh faster than the uh, the Brit. And with the Japanese at 239. So you, you're looking uh, about 30 points, 25 to 30 points on the uh, between those two planes, which is pretty nice to, to just have that little bit of an edge now let's check the maneuverability oh, let's get into the rate of climb which is important so the the, the zero the japanese is uh, not the, not the zero the uh, mitsubishi is at uh, 33.5 then we have the uh, the blip, actually the, the lowest of the brit uh, 28.6 next highest is the uh, the Japanese with 33.5 and just that little bit more the Buffalo 33.6 so it's a little bit better we then come to the stall speed now you can see that the Japanese is more of a dogfighter with a stall speed of 80 the other two are identical at 120 okay so we can see yeah see that side of things we then come to the dive speed which is uh, very important in these sort of situations the Buffalo has got the highest at 580 meters, kilometers an hour at dive speed. Next, a little bit behind, is 560 with the uh, the Bristol. And at the bottom, with only 500, is the Mitsubishi. So the Mitsubishi trades diving ability for ability in a dogfight. Okay, so let's get and have a look at the maneuverability stats, which will show what it's actually like in a dogfight itself. And whether you want to be thinking about getting in one. So... Average time to do 360 degrees, 10.8 seconds. It's awful. You don't want to be getting into a dogfight with this. The Brit is next at 8.6, so it's it's fair. 
and the best is 7.9 with the uh, with the Mitsubishi, the Japanese, very, very good. We then come to the rate of roll. The rate of roll is 100 degrees a second with the uh, the Mitsubishi, the Japanese, and then tying the Bristol and the, uh, the Buffalo both have 120, so that's quite interesting. So the best is the Japanese, the other two just match. Controllability, sadly controllability, the Buffalo is the uh, is the worst at 83. Next is the uh, the Bristol at 86, and the controllability of the uh, the Mitsubishi is 88, that little bit ahead. Now we need to look at the the altitude that it uh, rock and rolls at. Similarly to the uh, the Bristol, it's 800 uh, meters, with the the Mitsubishi running at 500 meters, a couple hundred meters below. So you've got these two, which are the Bristol and the Buffalo, are able to work at higher levels to be able to be more interceptory than the uh, than the Mitsubishi. So that's the basic stats of the uh, of the plane and that's that's where we start off. So let's click this through, have a look at the uh, the details. Now the guns, you can see you've got 70 points out to 400 meters. 440 meters with 500 meters it drops to uh, to 38 and from 500 to 625 you've got a reducing amount of damage of 38 points so you've got a nice uh, nice range with the two uh, two different caliber machine guns for close work and further range very very interesting so let's get some equipment on and by putting the standard setup we'll find out if the uh, if the plane is liable to have the engine shot out so I do it this way so we set up with control services first aid and manual fire, extinguish fire extinguisher and we'll get those on board. No other equipment, otherwise it, it wouldn't be a fair test. So, let's see if I've got a, a nice pilot to go in. Ooh, yeah, let's let's put him in. Actually, let's just, just go for the standard, bear with me. So you, you get a 100% pilot with it anyway. So well, we will go straight in and see exactly what this can do. Sadly, it's hung, so I might have to do a restart, so bear with me. Okay, we're getting back in. Please, please, let nothing have happened. Please, please. Oh, I don't like it when this happens. Come on, please get me in quick. Come on. Uh, pause crossed. Pause crossed. How dead am I? Where am I? What's happened? Okay, uh, we are on scorching sands. Uh, I had one case where I was came back and I was about three seconds away from a... Uh, I just heard a boom. Yeah, I was about three seconds away from one of the pyramids, and I died. Uh, boom! That was the end of that sortie. So uh, yeah. Oh come on, please, please! It could get in any second, and I'm ready to click the button. Attention! You are entering the combat. Okay. Zone. Oh right. Okay. Get ready for battle. At least I wasn't. I, I would have been dead. I would have run into a pyramid. Right. Let's check the map. What's happening? That's. Get towards the centre, see what this is like, let's get some height first. Eight seconds or so boost, it's a nice looking plane. That's it, we're up at uh, sort of operating height. It wiggles around from side to side, feels quite nice. So feeling quite good, and I always like the view of those pyramids, but there are many too many pyramids. But hey... <laughs> There we go. What have we got down there? Lots of targets. I want to close in, get in. Now what is... There we go. Issues now. Let's get in. Heinkel there. That little Fokker. Let's deal with him. Feels quite manoeuvrable. Boost up. Come in underneath. a nice combination of guns. Surprisingly good. It f does feel tough. Let's try and cause them problems. Fix that. I couldn't really boom and zoom. Fix my pilot. When you've got someone in front of you, it's surprisingly good. 
but that's the issue. I was trying to stay, stay out, stay out of his shots. Ah, oh, couldn't, couldn't do enough. I came down. It's like I said, it's not good at dogfighting. I wanted to show now. What I need to do is get up. But what I try and demonstrate in some of these videos is not what you should do. That the what happens if you don't. That if you go down low and ta tangle with people and do play it in a different way, which is why some people say, "Oh, you shouldn't do that." But the real that's that's actually part of the point of what I'm trying to do. So going in, showing in the videos things you can do and can't do. Maybe I don't always explain it, and I haven't previously. And when that was pointed out, I, that that was the re and that's the reason why I did that. So I hope you guys understand why I do things that would be counterintuitive after all of the years of playing this uh, that I want to show you what it's like in those situations so you can then judge for yourself and whether it because if you tried those things would it work or wouldn't it uh, or not so that's that's the real reason I've got the guys coming in this way I want to uh, protect this zone I've got my buddy and the uh, bulldog going in so let's uh, go and go and assist him so what I'm going to try and do, so show that the uh, the dog fighting isn't really working. The what I'm going to try and do is boom and zoom, come in on. Let's have to someone closer that way. Come in on that bulldog if I get the chance. Uh, FW. So you see, it's it's not a bad little plane. When someone gets in front of it, they're going to have a really bad day. A really bad day. He's being followed, so I don't have to worry about him. HE coming in, let's follow him. Now, it accelerates pretty nicely without even trying, so... Uh, ooh. Those, that combination of guns really chews through the enemy. Very, very nice. The dogfighting itself, the pos you need the right positioning to uh, to help you in the situation. But the guns themselves are very, very good. Very good. Surprisingly good, actually. Uh, normally you don't sort of say about overpowered guns. But in this case, you, it has to be pointed out. Oh my goodness, it's a little monster. Let's go up to meet these guys. I feel like I'm I'm not being allowed to do more things because it's it's um getting into it's being forced to dogfight more often. But it by being forced to Oh we lost! But 6,000 points. You can't do that. It, it was a quick match. You can't do that sort of points in a bad plane. It's a really neat, fun little plane. It's a lot more fun than I suspected it would be. And you get first class straight out of the gate. No special abilities on it. No no special perks. No nothing. Just the plane, the standard pilot. It's really nice. It's re surprisingly good fun to play. And you feel like you want to be dogfighting it. So what I would suggest is putting in something to make it more nimble. The speed is fine. So let's get, so there we go, 40,000 credits earned, 700 experience, almost 800 experience on a loss. Let's see how we came. So first class, 6,000 points. It's only second to uh, to the one player in the uh, the Fokker. Very, very neat. And we even killed him. So, uh, you know, <laughs> not, not a bad situation. So what I would do, set this up. The guns are amazing. Uh, I would say it needs a lightened air airframe to give it more uh, agility and to give it that little bit extra come on control surface adjustment plus well the guns do feel very very nice 
So what I'm thinking, even more engine power to get you in and to uh, to deal with the enemies. I want to keep this uh, the video short, and I'll do a follow-up video for those who want to click through and watch uh, gameplay of this actually in operation. So the F2A-1 Buffalo, it's very very nice. It's really good fun, surprisingly good fun. I didn't think it would. I thought it'd be a boring American at this level. I I saw the stats in this league and thought it's not going to be so good, but actually it really is surprisingly so. So I'm the gaming bear. This has been the little buffalo, and it's a surprising little thing. So, see you on the next one. Thank you, guys. Bye.